will be more planned here. So that was great out on the list last year. We bumped it up a couple notch, notches. We're going to get it done. Maintaining Swiss system, there's about 16 pieces to do right now. I set the dates for the bigger locations. I'm going to get out in May. Uh, there's two weekends and do those. There's going to be some stragglers. I'll get a hold of you if you're uh, new and you haven't done it. And maintain our securement routine and improve the number of cargo slides. So we really did great. Over a three-year period, we went from like 17,000 cargo claims to 11,000, down to 2,000. We're keeping the stuff on the truck. We're still having some cargo slides. It's better than putting it on the street, though, right? It doesn't mean there's not damaged material, but uh, all the cargo slides we had were due to not secure problems. It was that simple. Back to the same old theory, if you put chains on, uh, it works real well. We're going to skip the drug-free workplace because Jason had that covered for us. When must we keep the new warrant? <coughs> Question. <coughs> yep. What else? Loading, unloading, or outside the truck, right? What are the Super 6? What's the PP you got in there? Somebody tell me. I hope you paid attention last time. There's six things you got to have on your body. Federal drug testing 
custody and control form. The nurses call them CCFs. Very important thing about this is it says Green Lines Transportation up in this corner. All right. So when instructed, and I, I don't want to use a machine gun where we should be using a BB gun. So if there's clinics where there's a problem, I'm going to tell you to take this paper. Also, the laboratory is MedTops. So this is going to come directly back here to Canton to our doctors so I can get the results. What happens, for example, in Jeffersonville is they'll send a uniform that says a leader on it. They don't write the right name in here. They check the wrong box. It goes to some clinic up in Kansas City. I can't get the results, and they'll, they'll check the wrong box. When that happens, i got to do a whole bunch of paperwork to make it right, because that's what the law says. So when we do a DOT drug test, there's only certain times, right? Free employment, random reasonable suspicion, return to duty, and follow-up. Don't have to worry about the last week because we're zero tolerance, right? If you test off, you're gone. But if you get injured on the job or you're an office employee, the blue form, we have them make these blue on purpose, says Roger Bettis Truck. So in our policy, it says that if you're injured on the job at Roger Bettis Truck, we'll send you for a drug test. That's for workers' compensation, okay? So we will give you the correct chain of custody to take. All the terminals have these. Right? The only time post-accident you would use a federal DOT form is if it was a DOT reportable accident. So what happens where drivers get confused is they have an accident if you were to get hurt. Say you tripped and fell outside the truck. All right? It wasn't related to the motor vehicle accident, so now you're doing a Roger Bass drug test because it's related to workers' job. So I want to make sure everybody understands there's two types of chain of custody, DOT and non-DOT. Never guess. It's, it's your responsibility being the person on the scene at the clinic to make sure they're using the right test. I will tell you which chain of custody to use and take with you if necessary. Is there any questions on medical value slips or chain of custodies? So what we're doing as a group is we're making sure that the clinics have the right paperwork all the time and check the right boxes, okay? The government doesn't care if it's a clinical error or our error. We still, the law says you shall do everything possible to correct it if it's wrong. So I have to request the med medical review officer issues a piece of paper that says this has been fixed or not. <clears throat> Physicals, medical research, you can't drive the day after it expires. We have to come get you. Does everybody understand that? If your physical expires on the 25th, you cannot operate a truck on the 26th. This just happened in Melbourne. It was the only one that's happened in three years. Um, I can't erase it. It stays in your DQ file for three years. In your DQ file, there's three years of annual violations reviews, three years of physicals, and three years worth of driver's licenses. So when a new one goes in, I pull the old one out. So when we make a mistake like this, it's in your DQ file for three years. I'm thinking about that. So here's what happened. A driver loaded on a Wednesday. His physical expired on Thursday. He didn't get back here till Friday. Whether the truck breaks down or whatever, at that point, you got to know in your head, I cannot drive a truck. I will come get you and the truck. So what do we do to fix it? You're going to notice now that when we put your physical in the cloud, that it's three days prior because we don't ever get more than about three days away from the terminal. So if your physical expires on the 20th, we're going to put it in the system as the 17th. That way it can never happen again. You can't blame dispatch because at the time they dispatched it three days prior, the trip was short enough, you should have been able to get here, but things happen. So make sure you never ever drive a truck uh, if your physical is expired. Is there any questions on that? Equipment tracking sheets. Um, anybody know when the final ELD mandate is? <laughs> December of this year. That's the end of the road. Okay. So one of the things that's been going on for three years is equipment tracking sheets. Terminals that load a lot of trucks and shops have this sheet. I'm going to pass it around so you can look at it. Just send it around so you guys know what we're trying to do. How many miles does a carrier have to track? We have to track some of the miles, all the miles, when a, when a truck goes down the road. All miles, right? Every mile must have a driver assigned to it. Whether it's JK or me on a road test or you. So there's two, two ways to handle that. You're either logged into the truck, which
which is not feasible for mechanics pulling multiple vehicles in or out, or you got to sign the sheet. So traffic coordinators, for example, in Randall might have one of those sheets and might write 15 trucks on them. The mechanics here or Randall or Jeffersonville might have 10 or 15 trucks on them. So I just want everybody on the same page. I haven't really policed this real hard because we're taking one step at a time approaching the ELD deadline. But we're, we're close enough to the deadline now, we got to make this happen as a group. Never drive a truck when you're not logged in, okay? If a repair facility for owner operators, if a repair facility has your truck, there is a remark in the system that says, left truck at repair facility, okay? Make sure you put that remark in so that we can determine, we can't just say a repair facility, we got to say it was Young's or Gordy's or D&D's, whoever it was. Okay, what, where is that comment at? When you go to off-duty, okay, so there's a pre-formatted comment in there okay. that says left to repair it. So. so you need to put that in and then you log out. Yes, sir. All right. And that's an all operator specific thing. It does apply to some of like in a walker, they drop them off at outside facilities. That way when those files show up on Anna's report every day, um, we know to go looking for quality or transport or go talk to Ed and find out who fixed this truck. It gives us a little bit of a heads up, saves us a lot of time. Just so you know, I'm not making a mouth out of a molehill. It's not like there's two of these a day. There's between 15 and 30 a day that we have to determine. And it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. So by having that sheet, it saves Anna an incredible amount of time. Accident scene management. I, I hope someday to uh, quit talking about this. We must report accidents within the first 15 minutes, OK? You must have the ability to take and send a photo. By a show of hands, is there any person in this room that cannot take a photo on their phone and send it in a text message? Anybody that can't should see me after the meeting, and I will show you how to do it, or we will address the issue. Because I thought we had addressed this several times. Everybody's like, yep, we can do it. Uh, that first seven minutes at the, at the accident scene is super critical. Why? What happens at about the 10 minute mark? Who's going to be there? Cops are going to show up. What happens when you're standing on the side of 270 and rush hour traffic and the cops are there? Leo? So you're standing on the side of 270 and rush hour traffic and 10 minutes has gone by. Who's going to be there? Cops. Cops. What are they going to tell you to do? Get your truck. <clears throat> yep, so we totally lost control of the accident scene. Alright? So first hand, we had two bad examples of this. Both accidents were not preventable. This just happened here recently. Okay? Two drivers, and this doesn't matter if they're owner operator or company driver, because one way or the other, it's a non preventable accident when someone strikes our vehicle or your vehicle. We want to get our money to fix the truck, right? That's an important thing to everybody. So in both these accidents, and this is crazy, they happened on the same day. A vehicle struck us on the right-hand side on the highway, lost control. Um, both accidents were between seven and nine thousand dollars damage. Both drivers had a flip phone. One guy said his phone was inoperable, it just didn't work, it couldn't charge. The other guy said that he couldn't take or send pictures. So here's the difference in what happens when I lose that first seven minutes. The, the, the second guy followed my instructions. I said, look around, find something that's under 30 years old, ask him to take three pictures and send them to my phone and say thank you. You gotta give him five bucks to do it. So I still had control of the accident scene. The other guy was unable to give me pictures or information and had them all around. And we actually sent somebody to the accident scene to get accident. 22 minutes that elapsed, now I'm getting nervous. We got old people in cars that could be hurt. Um, I'm getting nervous that we got huge liability exposure, so we sent somebody out to the accident scene. So in the end, what happened with this? In the one where the driver followed the instructions, we had the claim settlement about four weeks, I believe. The second one took almost three times as long to get our money out. So, you know, people do get nervous in accident scenes and sometimes they have a hard time following instructions. So anybody that's had an accident knows I'm going to tell you to do just a couple quick things. I had the driver in Springfield make a good point. Well, how are we supposed to get the triangles out and do all this in seven minutes? We do it every day, I can reassure you. Most guys already have the triangles out when they call. And what am I going to tell you? Take a picture of their insurance and the 
driver's license and get their phone number. Now you got 90% of everything I need. Call me as soon as you've sent that. The next thing I'm going to tell you is take three pictures. Their car, your truck, make sure license plates and some vehicle identification shows. Now, we still have two minutes left. We're going to take a whole bunch more pictures. And we are really successful at doing this. Anybody tell me why I did it in two separate steps? Why did I have you do the initial driver's license, get their phone number? Why did I do that? Most people get really nervous in an accident scene, especially with multiple vehicles. The human mind can only remember seven things at one time, so I just gave you three. Driver's license, insurance card, phone number. Call me. My next set of instructions, pictures of the vehicle, basics. We still got three minutes. We're going we're to get more information. But it is super critical in the handling of claims and recovering all our money, yours or ours, to make sure that these things happen. Uh, had a few arguments over the pictures. Uh, here's the thing, guys. We, we got to get with today. We got to be able to take and send a picture. A lot of guys now that they know the deal, they send me a picture and then call me. Awesome. As a group, we're doing a great job on the accident scene. Very, very important to listen to what I'm asking you to do because I deal with a lot of these about a hundred a year to be quite exact. So I know what happens. I can usually identify. When a person gets nervous or is failing to handle an accident scene, um, and this this double incident here, uh, I didn't do a very good job of that. I should have hit the 10 minute mark. I should have called and sent somebody out. But 22 minutes elapsed, so uh, did a bad job handling it. Injury reporting, the same thing, must be done within the first 15 minutes unless incapacitated. Direct report to HR or safety. Everybody got that? Call me or Melissa. I don't think anybody could ever tell me I didn't answer my phone or call you back in a recent week. I did miss, there's a person here, I missed their phone call this year. I didn't catch the next day, but that's one out of a thousand. <laughs> Secondary contact would be your local terminal manager, but you should call Melissa first and me secondary during normal business hours. Bolster poles? What's a bolster pole? Yellow pole. A yellow pole. Are they invisible? Or should you park next to them? I could park next to them. Why do you think I could park next to them? Because I've hit a few. I have a tendency to wake up, sleep on the wheel, turn the right, slam into a bolster pole. Bolster poles love me. So I just don't park next to light poles or bolster poles anymore. I stay away from them. Because when I wake up for some reason, I magnetically drive right into them. We're hitting a lot of bolster poles. Back in the building, is parked next to them. Um, it's a fixed object. It can't move or talk. So stay away from it. If you have to park near one, when we get back in the truck after we're outside the truck, how should we get into the truck? Walk around. Which way? Around down to the passenger side. Right. The long way around. Can't stress how important this is. We had an accident where the driver said, I quote, there is no damage. Number one, he backed up in traffic. We know never to do that, right? Never, ever, 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 ever back up in traffic. I don't care if you drive 500 miles around the block. Do not back up in traffic. It was 5 a.m. It was dark. There was one car tied up on behind him. There was another car farther back. All he could see was the car farther back. He backed up six inches, pushed the first car into the second car. One mile an hour, driver said there was no damage. Lots of pictures, you couldn't see any damage. Right now I'm at $13,500. One of the people's claiming bodily injury and the property damage to the vehicles is not closed yet. Probably going to be a $20,000 claim that had no damage, okay? Back to the critical seven minutes. Uh, that first few minutes is really important because I know right away when there's, plus another really terrible factor, there's two people in both those cars. What are the odds that out of one out of four people is going to have an alleged injury? What do you think those odds are? Real high. One, one of them's coming after you. All right, whiplash. You know what's going on, right? So that's an important thing for me to know. In that case, I might send that and have National Interstate send somebody out to the accident scene with that many occupants of the vehicle. Clean your mirrors before you back up. That helps a lot. 
get out and look, get out more than once if needed, uh, make sure what you're looking at, at in your mirror is what you really think you're looking at. Had a few accidents this year kind of replicate themselves where a guy thought he was looking at the rear axle of the trailer and was looking at the forward axle of the trailer and running a fixed object, gauge, pole, signs, that kind of stuff. Make sure you're looking at the right thing when you look in your mirror. Fraudulent claims. Take a good look at vehicles you'll be backing in next to. Alright, lots of old damage. Had two of these in the past 10 days. Make any nervous. One, we backed in next to a rack wagon, 20 year old Peterbilt that has the front completely smashed on it. The grill's bashed in, the lights are broken, the bumper's bent. And we backed in next to this guy. When we pull away, he's stating that we smashed into his truck. He, he, this guy knows the game. He called the cops, he got plant security out. He's going he's to make his pay, even though we didn't get his truck. Okay? So if I'm back in the next to a truck that looks like it was previously destroyed, what's a quick, good thing I can do to cover myself? Take a picture. Take a picture before you back up because it's got a time limit to it. And then you'll have a time when you back up. Alright? Sounds crazy, we have to be this protective, but I try to keep you guys in a mode of reality. This is what's going on out there. Pay attention to passing vehicles. I don't know why I always used to remember plate numbers. You see a car that's smashed up, there are groups of people that commit insurance fraud. They go out with a the car, they say they hit you, they do the wrong. The second fraud one we got going right now is it's from Spartanburg. They said one of our trucks was passing through. I can prove by GPS the closest truck we had was 105 miles away. Guess what they got? Plate number. So I asked some important questions. Is there photographs? Nope. Are you sure of the time? They said yes. I recorded the phone call. All right, that's important. We could have gone, we did go from Spartanburg. Several people did, but the time they said the accident occurred, I denied the claim because I could prove the closest truck was 105 miles away. Is it fraud or not? Who knows? I'll never know. We'll never know. But it's happening out there. So pay attention to the vehicles around you. The claimant in that case said they honked their horn and flashed their lights. That is a, in my head, that says fraud all over when I hear that. And they have no unit numbers, they only have a plate number. I could ride out here and get a plate number off anything, right? Yeah. Okay. So just be aware of what's going on around you. If something's funky, don't move. Take a picture. Train the new hire documentation. I had promised to get that revised, and I did. Um, it was about 40 pages for every person that trained. So even though you guys don't train, I want to make sure that in the event that you do, um, we all are on the same page. So what I did is I made this little, little instruction sheet for the trainer. And instead of having pages and pages for the driver, there's one line. Because basically I need to know how much to grow, how much you work, and what your total was, what you haul on the truck. Alright? So I got the whole training pack down so you can put 60 days on these three pages. And the back covers all the other miscellaneous things where the driver and trainer can initial on there. Try to cover what we went over last time as a refresher. Every person that comes to work here is going to have 40 hours for securement at EMOD. It's got them to do be documented. Any person that's less than two years experience, 200 hours based on if they don't have flatbed. Okay? And um, they must be logged on the ELD. That's very important because when a person is done training, I'm going to take those documents, print out all their training logs, and stake them to them. Why do we have to go to those places? It's to cover us from a liability point, but for five years, or not five, actually three and a half, Metal Motor Carriers has been working on a new entry driver requirement. And for all these years, they've been saying it's going to be 200 hours, 200 hours, 200 hours. So I've just been playing the game. So if it does go in, they're thinking it's going to go into effect this year. If it does, we're in good shape. But I want everybody to be aware of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, our driver's manual does say 160 hours of training, and I left it that way because we're meeting and we're exceeding our policy, right? We're doing that. Forgot to log off. What do you do? Edit. You can edit it. You can call Steve at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Or you can. 
No, that's never an excuse. I'm going to make it for trucks this year. Otherwise, the is going to be all over them on that. Pay for the loan. That's a bad answer, Leo. That's what you would do. I know you. But no, I can get home. <laughs> Remark the date and time you forgot to log off. Apparently, the other 300 times I said this, I must have done a bad job because nobody remembers. Simply just go off duty for about three or four minutes, come back on duty, do your pre trip. Remark, forgot to log off, 3 1 19 at 17 months. So, all you got to do, go truck. I have never had a driver get a ticket, and I've had several of them stop. Okay? Put the remark in and go truck. Or you can edit yourself. Call me at 8 o'clock in the morning and I will fix them off. And like I always say, if you're a nervous now, you could start a paper law. I try not to make paper. It's a paper trail, I don't want it. Or you could edit yourself. If it's a complicated edit, it's a real drag in the truck, I understand that. But if, you can always do this. If you're nervous about crossing the scale or something that, that you know they're really tough there, of course call me and I'll fix it for you. But try to get some more sleep is what I'm telling you. So put a remark in the date and time you forgot to log off, do your free trip, and now call me in the morning. Everybody got it? That's All right. right. And if it's the morning, just call me. That's fine. You know, guys call me on the weekend. I don't care. It takes me two minutes to fix your log. I appreciate it if you can call me at 4.30 Sunday morning. I'm usually up about 6. But we'll do whatever you got to do. We got to make the field turn. <laughs> My girlfriend's banging on your front door and you own it. That's all I got to say. Jeffersonville Fuel Pump. We figured out what was going on down there. This is the only pump that will ask you to enter a second card number. So it has for a card number. You enter your truck number at that point. And for the past couple of years, Roger's thinking I got fuel all messed up because guys are calling me, can I get fuel, can I get fuel? And we figured out what was wrong. There was a mechanic and several drivers, more than three, when I show up down there from random and fuel my truck, they say, put the last four your social. And I'm like, how can this work? It can't work. There's only got to be three things in the fuel system, truck, driver, and car. You buy fuel, right? Well, those drivers, it just so happens the last four of their social was the truck number. So, so we had multiple people giving foreign drivers the wrong instructions for the Jefferson Road fuel pump. Hence, hundreds of phone calls have gone out of Steve's life. So, when it asks you for your second car number in Jeffersonville only, enter your truck number. That's it. Not your kids, but they of birth, not my shoe size, your truck number. That's they they always told me that somebody had to go inside and bring a different car out. That's what. That's because they were giving everyone the wrong instructions. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm glad we're over. I feel a lot better. I thought it was something I was doing wrong. <laughs> Random drivers have the most trouble down there. Um, anytime you swipe three times, you're locked out. The only people who can fix it is me or Kelsey or Brad. You have to go to a DOS prompt, if anybody knows what that is, and actually open your car up and reset it. So you swipe two times, and now when you're mad, so you go up here to the pile of candy, you swipe and it doesn't go. What are you? You're locked out. You swipe three times in a 24 hour period for security to lock your car down. So then we, we have to unlock your car. There's no other way to make it work. So there's one other crazy thing that I'm only mentioning here for now that happened to a mailman driver. I issued him five new fuel cars. I went in and erased them off all four fuel systems and set them up multiple times. Finally turned over to Fleet One. And there's a list of things I have that happen. Is there a space in it? Are you putting your car near something magnetic and erasing it? Ask them all the usual questions. His truck number was correct in the system. Everything was right. You can't figure it out. Fleet One's like, they watched them do a transaction with a brand new car that was set up correctly. They set it up, not me. It didn't work. Who's taking his wallet out and setting it on the CD? What's in the CD? Speaker with a giant bag on it. And it was erasing every brand new car again. So please, <laughs> don't put your wallet on the CD. What I recommend is leaving your fuel card in a couple. No one can use it unless they have it. Your last for your social <laughs> truck number. Don't worry about it. Anybody else?
any questions on fuel? I think we're down to a limited number of fuel problems now. Randleman, the messenger you saw that the fuel pump was down. There is a very expensive component, the controller. That failed. We were able to make a temporary repair. Uh, sometime in the near future, we are going to have to take that pump down and uh, replace a couple components on it. They're actually inside the computer components. When we do that, I'll let you know. I just hate for somebody to get to the terminal, expect to get fuel coming in on the fumes, and, and not know. So that's why if something goes down, I always send a message out to you guys. The upgrade went well. Very little stuff happened on the street for you guys. For us on the inside, we're still struggling a little bit. It's a very different environment to work in. So be patient with the shop guys and come to check. Vehicle maintenance, Jeff, is up. Yeah, I'm actually going to bring around. I'm going to bring around the new EFS. Does everybody have new EFS checks? Do you, you guys all do? I've got one check. Okay. Who doesn't have? You put them on the internet. Okay. I'll bring some around, and I've also. I'm going to send, did everybody get one of these instruction sheets? Okay. Anybody, anybody who doesn't have my son, go ahead, Jeff. Okay. We've had, we've had a couple problems with uh, when somebody has a low battery and they're, they're, they keep on cranking the truck trying to get it started. We've had a couple of Qualcomm's and it's killed the Qualcomm. Also, we've had a couple of issues to where when you go to the jump start truck, it kills the Qualcomm. Um, a lot of different things you know, can be taking place in order to cause that. So from now on, if you get in your truck and you got a low battery, you can't get it, you know, you crank it, it's low. The best thing to do is just call Ben first, let him back it up in case it does crash it so we don't lose that information. Or you're getting jump started, call him and have him back it up. It won't take him about five to ten minutes. And he can back up all that information in case we do, you know, nuke it to where it's done. And also, we, we I mean, just be careful. I, I know that y'all know, but try not to jump start unless you have to or have somebody that knows what they're doing jump start because we have lost a couple of these units. And what are they? Eight, nine hundred dollars a day. You know, I mean, that's that's what they are. So that's that's where we're at with that. Uh, EFS checks. Uh, he's passing them around. I hope everybody has them. It is a different system for us. Uh, it's a little bit simpler for y'all. Y'all can actually get them in the truck stops now. They have them in the truck stops. So if you go by the truck stops, you try to get them. Um, one thing that happens now when you call, when you call, I used to ask you to check number all the time and I'd have to have everything. There'll be occasions, we just ran into it this week, to where the vendor that you're using actually has uh, the check already and he wants to use his check, which is totally fine, but I still need the check number. I need to know who I'm paying the money to. In other words, interstate, you know, truck repair or pilot or whatever, I have to have that. Once you give that to me, I will put it in and I will give you a money code. It's like a 10 digit code. And you will write that on the check and I need you to get a receipt. We are failing miserably at this at different locations. And just like Steve said, you have it, most of you, well, all of you, except for a couple of you, have smartphones, have a camera. If you can't get a receipt from the guy, just take a picture of it and either text me or email it to me. So I have, the, I have to have that because when it comes over on Ben's side in there, we need to have a receipt to put back against it. This week, just to give you an idea of why we need this receipt, we had a truck fix in um, down around Columbus. Okay, and I knew the vendor that, that did it. Well, when it comes over on bid side, it doesn't tell the vendor, it just got a check number and a map. And that actually the company was from Missouri. So here I've got a charged amount of money and it's saying Missouri on it. And I'm like, what in the world is this? I happen to remember that, you know, the money amount, and I went back against my records and I found it because he didn't get a receipt for it. So definitely turn in your receipt. We, we need your receipts desperate. Another thing, I've said this before, but I want to tell you again. I will not cut a check. Tyler will not cut a check. Nobody's going to cut a check 
for you unless we're talking to you. Okay? Because once we give that code out, that money's gone. There's no getting it back. So if you're broke down on the side of the road and the guy's there with you and you're talking to me on the phone and you hand the phone to him, I can give it to him that way. But I'm not cutting a check if you're in a pilot or something and you tell the guy, go ahead and call JK and, and him pitch, I'm not going to give it to him. Because there's so much fraud going on that it is unbelievable. We haven't had it in years. But with this system, it's even worse because we just give them the money. You know, I've had guys, just to give you a for instance, I had a guy call me one time and he said, hey, I got this truck number. He gave me our truck number. And he said, he's on the, he's in the construction zone. He blowed a tire. And he said, I went out and fixed it. State troopers with you right now. You know, you need to cut me a check. I said, I'm not going to cut you a check. Hung up on him. Called me right back. I said, listen, state trooper's going to write him a check. I said, let the state trooper write him a check. You know, this went on for a couple of hours. Back and forth. He wouldn't give up. He just kept on. So I ended up calling him. I said, where are you? This guy said, well, I'm sitting in a truck stop in Tennessee, which is where this call was coming from. And I said, is there anything wrong with the truck? No. I said, look around you and see if you can see. And this has been years, this has been some years. He said, yeah, there's a guy standing over there on the cell phone right now. This guy was looking at our truck now, calling me, trying to get me to cut a check for something that wasn't going on. That's the reason we don't do this. But other than that, if you, if you have any problems, just call us. We'll get you. You have to be patient with us because it's a new system. And we are kind of getting into it. Once we get used to it, it'll work fine. But the only thing that you have to put on that check is a money code. Okay? So I need the money. So I will give you the money code. I need the check number. And I need who's, who that we're cutting the check for. And I need the receipt back there so we can verify. And other than that, that's all I have. Does anybody need a new insurance card? Okay, so real important to call IT if your voltage is low, you need to have a backup. Yo, pay attention. I know you're always pushing me to get out of here on time, so zip it. Okay. Real important to not keep cranking if your voltage is low. The amperage and starter draws will burn up the omni tracks. We practice this three or four times. It's a very expensive hobby. If it goes whoop, stop. Okay? We have to call the IT department and back up the omni tracks, and we have to get some juice on it before we keep cranking. Hey, Steve. Yes, sir. Are you going to get any of them checks, too? I only got one of them checks. Sure. Jeffersonville, they're making the move. I'm going to actually let Roger talk about this when he gets up here. Uh, we're moving to a new location over at Eagle, and that's going to happen before the end of the summer. It's going to give them a... I need my new insurance card. I back there. Okay. And a uh, lot of different stuff coming out of there that uh, we might have hold off before. I didn't get a chance. I got some really great pictures yesterday. So here's one for Lois. Can anybody tell me what is wrong with uh, that load there? What's not right about the security? That's the back we're looking at closest to us. <laughs> this I do not stack up the one heat in the middle. That's how we see them sometimes. The back doesn't have an axe on it. On the rear of the trailer, a lot of loads I look at, we forget about stuff sliding off the back. Very slippery material. These skinny lay down coils, they will come off the back of the truck. Seen a bunch of them, okay? So the front and the rear, make sure you got it out. All right, that's a false ball cabin. We've got three pieces of securement on there. Let's keep it from flying off the truck. Otherwise, the guy did a pretty nice job on that. So has anybody seen the, the stand-up slip coils, the one, two, three inches we're putting in a rack coming out of there? That looks like a security party. So if anybody sees crazy loads, with Jefferson Bill, we're going to haul a lot more freight out there now. Going to different destinations we had previously. 
take pictures. If we can use them for training, if you find a good way to secure it, um, let me know. And the, the purpose of these meetings is to share information so none of us can hurt. They are alone in multiple slits standing up, whether the eye's this way or this way. As a reminder, do not stand on the side of the eye on those skinny slits, all right? The way I always do it, the way they're telling them to do it, is I put a two-inch strap belly wrap on the top before I do anything, and I just take a couple clicks on it. Then I secure the coil, take that off, and I put belting and a four-inch strap on the top to keep it together. Because they're putting, you know, I don't know how many it is, eight or ten of them it looks like. But this, it's only about this wide, the whole mess. But if you stand over here and a thousand pounds falls on you, what happens? You're dead. So when you're doing those multiple slip coils, make sure you're approaching it from the side, not the eye. CSA update. Since uh, October, I tried to find a good benchmark. October 2018, um, we are currently at 8% for unsafe driving. We are down 7%. And if you remember, we were trying to get to the end of the year. Thank you very much. We did that. We were successful. And we dropped our score over lunch. I didn't do it. You guys did. Congratulations. That, to drop 7% that quickly, that's uh, a pretty big jump. Vehicle maintenance is currently at 17%, it's down 5% from 22. Crash is at 1%, it's down 2%, and our hours of service violation remain at zero. In-house every month for our staff meeting, I have to report how many violations are occurring on the system. We're averaging about 25 or 30. Very few for driving, most of them guys are stuck inside the ship or inside it. You guys are doing a great job reporting it in. I put it on hours of service law, and Ann and I consider that. It's considered for safety bonus. It's hundreds of phone calls a month. Guys are like, I might get stuck in here. So if you, if you spit out a violation the next day, I put that call log with it. It says, hey, this driver called and told us he was stuck. We're not holding that against you. Um, is that the same thing, guys, along that, when they're stuck in a location? You know, I tell them yes. You were working correctly. Yeah, you don't have to call, but if you think it's going to be a lengthy delay, like you're going to be you know, two hours over and you're stuck in line somewhere, you should call. But if, if you're going to be over you know, four minutes, put a mark and delay the shipper is up. I, everybody here does a pretty good job of doing that. Remarking it is very important before what? You're stuck in the middle and you get loaded and you're going to drive to the truck stop before you drive. Before you drive. That's right. Because you're trying to let Joe Public know that if you get hit between here and the truck stop, you're, you're not out there outlaw trucking. You're just trying to get to the truck stop to safe parking. Those are the words to use, safe parking. Going to safe parking. Leave yourself an out when you're loading. Uh, Randleman, uh, we want to really address the injuries down there. We do a pretty good job here, but it applies to all of us. Stop and look before you walk. Look at the floor before you move your feet. We've talked about this a lot of times. Beware of all potential. And I wish I could quit talking about uh, cranes. We had a crane hit. We have a lot of cranes. We got a crane hit uh, Wednesday, I believe it was. All right. Be aware of these people running cranes. Man, you got 40 grand on a, a 40,000 pounds on a crane and slams into a truck. If something falls off, you're dead. So pay attention to these guys. They're not impressing me with their level of skill. I intentionally put EOBR up there as an electronic onboard recording device and an AOBR, the same thing. Remember we talked about it last time. So what kind of unit do we have on our truck right now? Is it an ELB? No. It's an AOBR, right? Yes, Okay. Does weather usually mug the driving make a difference on that? When, like an IBG, the newer units, the brand new trucks, yeah, there is no driving. You're actually, anybody that's got a new truck with an IVG, they're in AOBR mode. So that we're all together as a fleet. When we flip the switch, hopefully before or before December, they'll all go into ELB mode. They wait for the last minute for that, huh? Send you that update? Uh, it's not me. It's Omnitrax and the Federal. Yeah, I figured they're, sent, they're waiting until the last minute. So that was the other thing I was going to say about this is that I have been Brad and I have been constant communication for almost three years with Omnitrax monitoring the federal motor carriers. They 
issued a guidance before the last safety meeting that said, here's an example of a perfect ELD. And it was a picture of our MCB 50. And I'm like, perfect. If the government says it's good, it's got to be right, right? So then I called Lobby Tracks and I asked them two questions. I said, I see on federal motor carriers you have an MCB 50 listed as certified for ELD. So if that's true, why don't I have the information to update my fleet? Why haven't we done it over the year downward? Why didn't we fix it? And I said, I'll answer that question for you. The second question that I asked them is, are we going to be able to update over the air, or am I going to have to plug a thumb drive? So he came back a week later, and I like the salesman. He's a pretty honest guy. He's like, look, version 1385R of the MCP50 is not certified, but we are saying that it will be. So they listed it just like everything else. They're scanned. They put it on the Federal Motor Carrier's website. Just like me and Lynn. Me and Lynn can start an ELD company. We say we certify. We send a letter to the government. They put us on the list, man. It's all for signing. So I think two things are going to happen out of this, guys. One, they're going to either change the criteria. Two, they're going to change the date. I'm done worrying about it. It's, it's out of my hands. It's up to the government. But when it does go, there is a very real possibility that all the units will not be able to update over the air. We'll actually have to plug a thumb drive into them. It takes about an hour and a half a unit to do. So if the operating system in the truck is a year or more older, they can do it over the air. So if it's one of the units that I've updated, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15, I have a list of them, we'll have to put a thumb drive. So it's an open field right now, but it's important to know that we have an AOBR some people are still calling it EODR, it's the same thing. We don't have an ELD. <coughs> How does the cop know? You guys remember this from the last time? When we send our logs to the cop car, do you remember how the cop knows? So he's going to say, Mike, you got an ELD or an AOBR? What's your answer? A he's going to write you a ticket. So you say you got an ELD. Let's say you tell me you got an ELD. He gets in his cop car. When you push the button to send in your logs, you got it. Man, you should get a congressional medal of honor. Brian was paying attention. Thank you, Brian. I feel better about doing all this. If a PDF file comes to the truck, you know that you've got an AODR. Okay? If the, if the data goes directly into a software program, then he knows you've got an ELD. I don't want to complicate it too much, but they can tell in two seconds when they're sure to give the right answer. You've got an AODR. Well, I say so. New insurance cards, please take the time to make sure that your IFT is correct. Your insurance card is correct. Everybody's got a lease. <coughs> and your registration. Okay, that is special for the you guys are not at all. Take the time to do that. Also make sure you're doing check your ABIs for tractor and trailer when you're walking around. Bonus plans. How many people in here don't understand the bonus of the programs? Safety bonus? Fuel bonus, quarterly bonus. A lot of terminals have requested this, but if you guys don't have questions, we'll skip it. You guys all understand it? No, I give you two seconds on it. Safety bonus is 2%, quarterly bonus is 2%, don't crash your dinner. Okay? Minor accidents at 1000 bucks. the major is 2000 bucks. if it's in between safety committee decides. The fuel bonus is benchmarked by the last three quarters of the drivers performed. You do better than 50% of the fleet does, then you get it. There's actually four categories you can get. You can get idle, over speed, and over RPM. If you get all three of those, we give you an extra 75 bucks. It comes out to $300. Plus, then Roger's got his insurance bonus. I don't want him to touch on that. So, any questions on the bonus? Okay. Brad's going to do a fuel system review, and i got to give him a little pad in here because he's flying blind. He has no idea what crazy stuff I put up here because he was unable to make a couple of meetings with us. So we're going to talk about handheld devices, um, and there's a couple of slides up here. Um, before we get started, I want to mention that we had one accident where the driver swerved. This was last month in the snow to miss a tractor trailer. It was going about 40 miles an hour on the highway, or less, with no four ways on, in climbing 
lights fell, we swerved to avoid a collision, and we tore the mirror off our truck. How much a mirror is a grand, right? 800 bucks. Plus, we, we tore up the door. So, was he talking on the phone? We'll never know. I'll never know if he was talking on the phone. But I told him, you're so lucky, because I could have been calling your family and saying you're dead. If you hit another tractor trailer, what usually happens? Yeah. You die. That's it. You're, it's all, almost like getting a fixed object, except it's moving a little bit. All right? So, especially in, in inclement weather, but all the time, when you're driving, you're showing the people one thing, that is driving the truck. And I'm going to let uh, Brad do it. There is two other slides besides this one for the uh, <laughs> Okay guys, good morning. <coughs> um, we'll try and tie in some of what, what Steve's talking about with some of our Smith system uh, thought process. The uh, if we're in March of the last days that uh well I'm um, kind you guys see on TV, all the people are advertising on TV, it's car show month. I think the car shows what happened I think we the Detroit car show on February, March. Everybody's pulling out all the stuff. So I'm going to kind of tie that in with something I, I just happened to see on the national news. And uh, we talked about this the last time. The you know, traffic deaths are going down. And on the, on the uh, national news, they were talking about all the car shows and all the bells and whistles. And, and uh, you know, everybody's got the backup camera in their new vehicles pretty much now. The bigger companies, the Audis, the Lexus, the high power people now, uh, they were introducing everything at the car show. They've got a camera that surrounds the car. So any place that you want to see around that car, you have no longer a blind spot. There's a camera there. You can see that kind of stuff. So they talked about all the bells and whistles. It's kind of what we related to last time was, you know, all the safety things that they come out with, all the airbags, all the bells and whistles. That's really cut down on the, on, on the total accidents going on in the, in the United States. However, the national news people took it one step farther, which I'm glad they did, and we need to make sure that everyone's aware of that. However, still, 25% of the people that are dying is associated with distracted driving, cell phones. That number is going up. 2013, it was 16%. Now it's up to 25%. You blame that on all the bells and whistles, you can't roll that. That was what they were saying, how much is too much. They were saying it was a smartphone app that you can get with one of these Audis or Lexus, I can't remember which one. It'll even tell you how much longer the red light that you're coming up on is going to stay red. Before it turns green, it's going to count down right on your, right on your uh, Dashboard, how many seconds is left before that light turns green? Is that taking it too far? Probably it's not. So, you know, just, just to tie that into what we were talking about, Steve uh, is going to have a talk about it. Just, just put the phone down. Uh, as I said, 25% of the casualties and accidents now are related to distracted driving. We all know it's illegal to text and drive for cars and trucks. Uh, headsets, what we'll talk about, I got a headset on. Uh, yeah, you got a headset on. But is it distracting? How many, how many guys can, can actually say that they've driven down the road and you're talking on your headset and you think, well, what just happened five seconds ago behind me? Did, did I miss something? Are you missing things? And that's how I stuff into the uh, into the Smiths and stuff. Uh, Amy High, when we talk about Amy High, we're working about 15 seconds ahead. How many, if you're going 60 miles an hour, how many feet per second do you travel? Somebody know? 300 feet. Yeah, 88, 88 feet per second. What this, what's this drop? Right? 90, 90, 90 feet long? So you're going to the, the length of this in, in one second. Three and a half seconds, you're going to link to the football field. So if your phone rings, because it's on your lap, 
or something. How long do you think you're actually taking your eyes off the road to look down and see who's calling me, wasn't calling me, uh, what I want to answer the phone? How many seconds do you think that's actually taking you to register? Couple three. It's going to take you a couple to figure out who phone calls some of them. It's better than your screen. So, uh, you know, you talk about aiming high, you're, you're looking down. You're going to look down on your lap and wherever that thing might be. So, hey, let's, let's do everybody here. Let's put your hands on your knees for a minute. Look down at your hands. Wiggle your hands a little bit. Look through your fingers. Can you see what's up there on the board? You can't. But if you look up there on the board, move your fingers. Have you seen your fingers wiggle one of them? So, so that's, that's the whole thing about aiming high. Let your peripheral vision take care of what's down below. You're still seeing things out in front of you that are, that are significant. All part of getting the big picture. We teach you in, in uh, Smith System training to keep your eyes uh, moving. Avoid focusing on any object for more than two seconds. We already talked about that. Are you looking down at your phone? Is it going to take you more than two seconds to do that? So just try, just try to make a relationship out of this stuff. Um, as I said, well, you have to go two or three seconds, you come with me, keep a second. And you're leaving yourself around if you're not, if you're not paying attention, if you're talking on the phone. Um, it's not a good thing. What else, what else you got up here, Steve? Don't play God. I saw that every day. It's a really, I mean, it's a, we've mastered this badger, and we know we still have some issues with it, but, we want everybody to look at this cloud system or we're looking at how many tracks to actually see if you're driving. You'd rather not have people calling you on your cell phone. I realize there's times you've got to talk to Kevin or any of the dispatchers. We want to really stress the fact that we don't want to make those conversations with the way you're driving down the road. We want to look to your stop. If we need to talk to you badly enough, we'll, we'll text you on your own tracks and say, hey, if you need a call. Sometimes you pull over safe restaurant or something. You really want to try to get away from, from tying that in as you want. That's not the problem because we were talking to you on the phone. Says that one. That's good. Like Steve said, I'm flying over the blind today. So. Uh, anything else? Really, that I, I think I've covered about it. I don't want to talk about it here. Um, Steve was talking about some of the backing accidents. Uh, again, we've got video proof of people backing in the bolster, backing in the stuff. And, and you know what? Well, this is back to the two seconds of not focusing on this so. And I do it. I'm building it. I back in out here every day at work. Get focused on one mirror because you think you're seeing everything you need to see when you're backing in. You know, move, your, move your head back and forth to all the mirrors and all the positions on your truck. I know it's easy, easier said than done sometimes, but yeah. We've seen guys just focused on one corner of their truck thinking everything looks good, going the whole right front black stuff. Were they ever looking up there? But the as you can see, they were focused on that one mirror. Okay? Anything else you want to touch on? You know, put your phone away where you can't reach it. Turn on automatic driving devices. There's a lot of drivers here that have automatic devices. You're like, why do you know that? You're not texting. Because there was a guy in Northbrook that said he was at had arrived at Spring Lake and needed to talk to me. So I looked at how many tracks he wasn't moving. I texted him back, I'm available. And his automatic reply came out. He had started moving, but it hadn't been five minutes. So show on the system yet. So automatic replies on driving. Tell your family you won't be answering the phone. Do they want you to come home or do they want you to answer the phone? You can give them my phone number. If there's ever an emergency, I will make sure the very first word in the message to your truck says emergency. If, if a message ever comes to your truck and the first word is emergency, you should probably stop the call for that. I try to be clear and concise on my messages. Call me today, call me this week, call me when you have time, and give you a phone number. I try to read for four staff the office staff. The thing about not playing God, who's driving around you? Your kids, your brother, your sister, your aunt, you know? 
and you, right? Don't, don't hurt yourself. Everybody wants you to come home. So that one second on the phone, and I, I am terrible about it. That's why I have to put my phone in my backpack in the back of my car. When I talk to you, it's because my car is the phone, not me. If I'm calling you back and I'm driving home, it's because I had to pull over to get my phone to call you back. So it's, it's a hard habit to break. So, you know, protect yourself, protect the public. We're gonna, we've got a couple of things left. We're gonna have Roger come up for a couple minutes and give you a business update. We have a quiz that we have to do. Uh, it takes about less than five minutes, and then we're gonna do the driver of the quarter and the driver of the year awards. I'm gonna apologize in advance. They got the plaques done yesterday, and they all said driver of the year. And I thought it was my mistake, like it usually is, and this time the A was not. They actually made a mistake there, so they will have the plaques uh, this week, and I will give them to you. But we still have your gift cards at uh, Small Gift. So, Roger, uh, if you'd like to take the rain. I'm going to stand right here. Stand right here. here. I brought this with me. If you guys don't remember anything that I say here today, please remember this. This is SDI Pittsburgh. Anybody haul out of there? Show of hands? Pretty much everybody. And one reason we've been giving them a lot of trucks is their pricing is, their rates are more of a premium than some of the others that are that way. We've been doing quite a bit of business there. But they pay us $75. I'll repeat that. They pay us $75 to tarp the load if it needs to tarp. They don't say in their gate pass, load requires tarping. Okay? So we include that $75 in our invoice when we charge them for the print. But in order to get paid the $75, we have to have a gate pass with our bill. So everybody that hauls out of there either gets $37.50 for tarping the load, or you get $75 for tarping the load. You're an owner of our We give you the full amount. <coughs> we charge them what they pay. They won't pass anything unless we attach with the invoice a copy of the gate pass. So it's worth $75. Or it's worth $37.50 to turn this gate pass in. <coughs> I'll turn them in all day long for $37.50 or $75. All you gotta do is turn it in. But we can't fill it and get paid if you don't. Kevin and I make that clear. Because Kevin's just got cut off. They are not gonna allow him anymore to go and ask for a gate pass because you forgot to turn yours in. We're shut off. Yeah, but there's printed double on there. And on, 
and on and on the uh, detention. It's when you scale in and when you are loaded, mm -hmm. not scale mm -hmm. out. Because when you are loaded, they don't care if it takes you uh, five minutes to tarp or an hour, they're paying you once you are loaded. So a lot of you guys turn in something out of detention is when you are loaded. First you have to But you have to have that for But we can just turn in like I, I cut in half. And I just turn in one of them or that scale kick in the rod you were showing. Yeah, that's what he's getting at. Yeah, yeah. it's got a double on there instead of the same. Well, so it, 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 it show, this show right right here. Right here. Right here. It's going to show you on your tarp thing. Well, that's what I need. Because okay, I need the other half for myself. Right there for my wrist. Does he keep, you cut that in half? Does Lynn cut that in half? And does Lynn turn in the entire sheet? Right. When in doubt, turn in everything. Because Why? I love to turn in the wrong one. Turn in everything. Like you you turn turn in this isn't that difficult. Yeah, I just put it in my leg. I've never had any problems. Okay.
keep it warm. Um, so, you know, that's really, as far as the market, it's a little soft. Um, but we've got a lot of other good things going too. I mean, this, this Jeffersonville uh, situation, you look at the plant running down there, we've been there for 20 years. They're gonna, they, 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 they're gonna close it uh, for what we do, what we ship. They're moving everything up there to the former Eagle Steel plant, which they own. So we're gonna be moving sometime here in the next three months, four months. Uh, we're hoping to have everything transition from from where we're at now over to the, the Loop Road plant uh, by uh, Labor Day. So uh, I was down there this week and I got the foundations uh, tore up and moved the they two cut the bike lines and then they also they have sledding in there now so they're gonna have a one-stop shop facility there. Uh, do sledding, shear work, and cut the bike line. Two cut the bike lines. We have, I don't know, a dozen trucks down there now. I wouldn't be surprised if we need another, you know, half a dozen trucks down there in the next year or so. So there'll probably be some business that, that, that you guys will probably handle and see what shakes loose. I know one thing, they're gonna, they talk about moving some of this uh, inbound material that currently comes from AK uh, to Jeffersonville. They're gonna uh, divert some of the production while they do this changeover to Worcester. So there's going to be some material moved from Middletown to Worcester, which we're going to hopefully set up and the park. <coughs> so there'll be some things in this transition. One thing when you when you shut a place down, you move it. There's a lot of trucking goes along with it. So it's going to be good for us because uh, there's going to be a lot of material moving here and there. So uh, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, our shop will be continue where it's at. Our fuel island will be, be where it's at. We actually sell these on that property. So we're not really moving, we're just moving the, the traffic office up there to the new plant along with parking of some of the trucks and so forth. Um, so that'll, that's something that's evolving right now. We uh, we have our insurance renewal, 3-1, everybody's got a new car, right? 3-1 was right yesterday. So that went well. I mean, we really had a, we had a $5,000 increase in our insurance, that's it, which is good. I mean, I was, you know, the reason why, why do we have 5,000? It seems like a lot, but it's not very much. Premium is 860,000. That's what we pay. We went to 865. That's a lot of money. Divide that by 12. Uh, and we get some of it back. Some of that we get back. So I thank you guys for, for what we do, what we can see, talks about success we have. I said this down there in Jeffersonville and, and I made it up, but I think it's the truth. I don't know that there was a truck line in the world that had a lower increase than we did. I mean that's sincere. I'm not being boastful. I'm just being gracious. I appreciate all, all you guys do to help us, you know, be successful in that area. Uh, one of the other truck lines had the renewal about uh, a week before we did. And he called me, he was in fuel uh, because his excess insurance premium went up about 30 some thousand. Ours went up about a thousand dollars for the same coverage. And the reason it is, you know, their losses and their records from a safety standpoint isn't what ours is. So. You know, there's greater liability there, the premiums more. And, and, uh, so I thank you guys from that perspective. Um, Kent Terminal is kind of coming around finally with the remodeling up there. We've got some parking there a little bit. It's been a little slow up there this whole time. It's typically December, January, February, but um, we're gonna get ramped up there and start start feel a little bit better right now. So uh, I think we're gonna continue to be busy up there. If you haven't been in there, it's turned out pretty good. We're chipping away yet with a few things that need done. Uh, we're going to do a wellness uh, event here upcoming. I'm not certain if we have a date determined, but we'll be getting some communication on that, meaning that we're going to have a person here from healthcare to do, you know, uh, to check you out, make sure your blood's good, do 100 push ups. 
even two. <laughs> I might be here giving out cash if we can get a hundred pushes on something. Uh, we have to have more together. Uh, Major, how uh, about the I mean, we're pretty good with drivers. I, I just mentioned to Tom, I think we may need a driver. Parking out here, I'm hoping the parking working out. Jeff says it's working out okay. Make sure you get your truck in there for perpendicular defense and don't be cockeyed. You know, be courteous to the guy next to you because we're kind of full right now with parking out here. <coughs> we have two trucks. Uh, we've got 17 trucks on the order. We've got 11 new trailers now. We've now got, got five new ones and about six new trailers that are for three or four years. So we're gonna we're adding we're gonna add six trucks in camp in trailers. The haul business to the Carolinas and Tennessee that we typically farm down anyhow. So we're gonna try to pick some of that off ourselves. So we're gonna try to expand a little bit up in Canton. Ten or eleven of those trucks are gonna be replacements, you know, stuff that's gonna wear out. Get rid of it. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have four or five coming this week, I think. So uh, here in the next few months, there's going to be some of the trucks put in the fleet. Jeff's determined what trucks are going to get sent out, put out of action. And uh, I'm going to share that. And then uh, the camera thing, make sure that you can take a picture of an accident. Okay, that's going to be mandatory. Have to, you have to work here, you've got to be able to do that. I hate to put it that way, but it's really, really critical. So uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you all once again. Uh, Appreciate everybody's efforts and continue to coach one another. As you said earlier, if you see something, particularly if something's new, somebody's not, you know, guy's not maybe putting up chains on or doing it properly, give him some suggestions and tactics. Yeah, up there, Jim's yeah, been up there in the building there, Ken. Uh, we have a garage there. We have a new door in the garage. Monday morning, Monday morning for no, the phone. Tuesday. Tuesday, I might have to. If I'm not work, next time I'm not working, I gotta come down here. Don't worry about it. I'll buy a phone if I have to. Just for that. Okay, so everybody's got a quiz. Yes, that's you guys. So let's take five minutes to do the quiz, and we're gonna do the awards. You guys are going to have a lot to talk about that wellness thing. It's going to be a lot like it was last year. We're going to have some vendors here giving out prizes. And, and so I think we've got the boot guy. The boot guy coming in. Uh, we've got a garage of wireless people coming. So we're going to have a fire plan. I think we've got a great piece of stuff. We'll have a green line account. Those kind of things will be available. It's not just going to be. Uh, what level we did last year and stuff like that. We had some smart prizes in the past out. Probably the same thing we did last year. I think Gates Smith went home with a big DVD or something. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have that kind of stuff available to next year as well. Also, uh, I was talking about the insurance renewal. I was, out, I was uh, at the annual meeting with the insurance renewal and uh, one of the speakers there was talking about the uh, reptile brain. And you guys saw that on the, uh, the guy did his little brain. The Bible thing was the first part that he talked about when he brought it to the alcohol thing. The lawyers are now using that reptile survival brain in state, in lawsuits. And you guys all know you see he hurt the car called K and R on the radio and the TV. You see uh, all the crazy billboard lawyers that are out there. Um, they're, they're, they're preying on the trucking companies and finding their weaknesses and trying to find uh, something to exploit 
and they try to pick a jury that, that uh, is friendly to people's survival instincts. Uh, three weeks, three Fridays ago, the highest awarded uh, jury number of uh, dollar figures was awarded to a, a family, a father and mother of a 21 year old driver in Texas drove underneath the tractor trailer while the guy was backing into his private residence. How much you think that was worth? Anybody got a number? We're, we're, we're insured for two million. Plus all, all of our help from our other companies. What did you say? That's, that, that, that's a pretty good guess. There's a lot of people driving around there. Texas has no limitations. $260 million. <coughs> think that truck and truck is still in business? Do you think that driver still owns his house? And they're, they're, uh, it's ridiculous. It's all because of it. And you know what's happening now? That, that lawyer who went to the scandal or whoever it was, they're out telling the next lawyer down the road, hey, this is how you beat this. This is how you do this. You drill down on something. The guy was over out. So they took that over hour documentation and ran right to the ground. Everything that you could come up with about hours of service and, and how irresponsible the trucking company was and the driver was and right down to his dog in the cab was. Uh, they found the dog out of the trash can. That was a case study that they talked about. Pretty ridiculous. It was out of the Everybody still writing? <laughs> okay, let's go over this together. If you have a problem, don't worry about it. I would like to mention a very important date. That date is August 10th. That will be the next safety meeting. August 10th. About to play a year in advance, make it easy for everybody. Anybody that needs some assistance here, I'll get with you because it's only a couple of people. Ran in the spring field get the golf So, number one, Blake has been kind enough to donate his test and assures me that in several meetings he has 100%, so we'll see. What is the most critical time at an accident scene? The first seven minutes. Hey, the first seven minutes. But well, we have to report accidents in the first 15 minutes, right? We're just kind of taking a little bit of a step farther. Eventually, my replacement will be born out of this crowd. When does following my instructions in the first seven minutes allow us to do? What does that allow us to do? Process the plane. Process it faster, recover our money, repair our or your vehicle, and eliminate the loss of revenue while the truck is not working. All of them. So anybody that only circle one, I'd like you to look back up the top of the page underneath the date. A little Smith system quiz here where it says circle all that apply for each question. And also, number two, I did my normal title where I said when instead of what. Just got to keep you guys on your toes. I'm disappointed when he's correct. <laughs> number three, what are the consequences for failing to report an accident or injury unless incapacitated? Perfect. Yeah, that's how safety committee finds it every time. What pay for should you turn in with each load so the company and you can get paid? C. C, all the pay for. That's the simplest question. When Roger was talking up here, I had two separate people ask me, well, is it just for tarpon or is it just for this? Let's just get right down to the brass tacks on it. Turn in all the paperwork. Okay? All of it. At the same time. Not at least two. If, and if there is some confusion on that, it doesn't mean that you have to tarp. You're paying us, if we have a rolling tarp, you're paying us at $75 more a more tarp. So if it says on there that this load must be tarped, we're going to give you 75 bucks for rolling your tarp before we block it. It's not an overclocked tarp pay. It's any kind of vehicle that you have, a tarp, hey, side hey, kit, whatever. Anything that goes over that load, we get paid for 75 bucks. We'll tarp it. We need to roll it all and roll it back. Okay. Number five. Circle all the proper people. Each time you exit the cab to 
load or unload. B, long pants, C, hard hat. D, rolling, oh no, B's not on there. E, long sleeve shirt with correct company logo. No NASCAR hat or sunglasses. H, safety glasses, work boots, not flip flops, and a high visibility shirt, jet, vest, or jacket. Number six, when is it okay to ride on the outside of a vehicle? Never. Never. Because who looks dumb? We all look dumb. We look dumb when we get dumb stuff. Who's respons Rob's responsibility is to get information and pictures to safety at an accident scene within the first critical minutes? Yeah. Driver, you're the captain of the ship. I appreciate everything you guys do. It's a good time to mention. There's one of me and a hundred of you. Anybody that's put up with me when I'm cranky, I am thankful and appreciative. I do get crabby after about three days of being away from no sleep, I start to get a little crabby. So I apologize and I appreciate your tolerance. Number eight, when is it okay to talk on the phone as a professional driver? D, an emergency or when you're not driving. And I'd like to point out that even when you're wearing a headset, if you crash, what, what are they going to do? 44, right? So it's all that first thing they do. Alright? There's one other thing I'd like to mention, and that is what do you need to do if you don't come to a safety meeting? What are you going to do? Watch the video. Watch the video. Thank you, man. I don't chase people down anymore. I had a couple of people call me on this last safety bonus. They're like, I didn't get my safety bonus. I'm like, I didn't see you at the safety meeting. We're all grown men. I'm not chasing you down. You know if you didn't go. So if you don't go, be assured that I know. And you will, you, you will have to come in and watch the meeting sooner or later. But I really want to say thank you to everybody who has a group do a tremendous job and one of our claims and accidents putting up with me. I know I'm a little brace at times. Uh, over the top. So driver and quarter. Jeffersonville and Springfield, I'm going to run through them all because you might know some of these guys. Russell Newman, he's a new guy, stepped up with the carrier stuff, help us get on board. Uh, for Malvern, that driver is currently down in Springfield, helping us out down there. That was Richard Clark.
So uh, congratulations to everybody that did that. And uh, that's all I got. I want to thank you. Thank you for your time and your patience. Um, we meet again on August 10th. See you then. I will set out this on
did the right and left and wherever you picked up. I didn't do right. And the one was saying it was just like the new gloves.
record, but that's an ocean violation right there. You, so it means you fucking use that cord for how many years? I'm taking it out of service right now. Well, I'm thinking it to you one time. It'd be laid on your desk, buddy. It'd be laid on your desk, buddy. That's the way you're fucking get. Put a red face on I did not, but I, I'm going to film a call today. It was too late, I didn't want to wake him up.